Vitalik Buterin has a blog. And if you are a subscriber of this channel, it's pretty much required reading. If you don't know, Vitalik is one of the founders of Ethereum and in my opinion, the single most influential person in crypto. His blog is a somewhat random collection of different topics loosely focused around crypto, but many of the most innocent looking posts have actually had huge impacts on the crypto landscape. In one post, Vitalik outlined the basics of an automated exchange market that the founders of Uniswap eventually ran with, creating a protocol that is worth billions today. He also outlined a retroactive public goods funding model, which Optimism adopted as their main incentive for building infrastructure on the network. I thought it might be fun to go through his most recent blog posts together, hit the highlights, and then talk about some of the potential implications, especially for the world of DeFi. Vitalik's most recent post is on NFTs, and more specifically, the concept of soul-bound NFTs. He uses the example that in many MMORPGs, and specifically in World of Warcraft, there is a concept of soul-bound items, which, unlike most items, cannot be traded or sold to other players. While Vitalik was famously a World of Warcraft player growing up, I was more of a RuneScape guy myself, so this is the item that comes to mind. If you know, you know. These soulbound items can be much harder to obtain than tradable items because you actually need to beat a boss or do a quest yourself instead of just buying them from another player. So back to NFTs. The vast majority of NFTs are not soulbound. They can and usually are bought and sold. This trading is good in a lot of ways, but it also lets the cool things go to the highest bidder. For example, what does it mean when you see someone with a CryptoPunk as their profile picture on Twitter? While some people who show them off are definitely crypto OGs, when you see that they have a floor price of over 200 grand, it's mostly just a display of wealth. Vitalik goes on to talk about POPES, an acronym that stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. These are NFTs given out for attending events, like hackathons or conferences. The problem is, even these are tradable. And if you'd like, you could even buy your own proof of attendance of something on OpenSea. Like, yeah, I totally attended CoinGecko's Bitcoin Pizza Day. I didn't just buy proof of attendance for 0.008 ETH. So why aren't more NFTs soulbound? Soulbound NFTs could easily be created by just adding a line of code to the standard NFT smart contract. It's curious that there haven't been more soulbound NFTs to date, given that there are some crazy applications that soulbound NFTs could really unlock. In my opinion, the main reason this hasn't happened so far is greed. Unfortunately, greed is endemic in a lot of the crypto community, and making an NFT untradeable pretty much guarantees that in the short term, its economic value would be zero to both the owner and the creator. So if you can't make any money, what's the point of having untradeable NFTs? Vitalik goes on to talk about governance rights being a useful application of soulbound NFTs. Imagine you have a DeFi protocol with a few early users that really are the reason for its success. Kind of like the very first hosts and renters who took a chance on Airbnb. The current status quo for community governance is to airdrop a token and give more of these tokens to the early users. The tokens would then serve as votes in community governance. The problem is that any wealthy group or individual can buy these tokens from the early users, directly buying influence and voting rights without having earned them. Solely being wealthy should not be the major qualification for steering the direction of a crypto protocol. Even worse is that the people that are willing to spend a lot of money on acquiring governance rights are often the people who would stand to directly financially benefit from influencing the vote. This sounds eerily similar to the politics of the real world. Now imagine that instead, voting rights were given to early users using soulbound NFTs. This would ensure that control stays in the hands of the early users that are more likely to actually care about the long-term success of the protocol. Of course, this comes with its own set of challenges, but surprising that there hasn't been more experimentation so far with governance like this. So, are there any current examples of soulbound NFTs? Vitalik brings up Proof of Humanity as the key example. Proof of Humanity, I'll link their website in the description, will send a non-transferable and unique NFT to your Ethereum address after you prove that you are human. Kind of like a crypto ID card. 
This is something that Vitalik has actually talked about a lot in the past, and for good reason. While it may go against some of the standard crypto focus on anonymity, it could be the key to unlocking a huge number of applications, especially in DeFi. Beyond the obvious examples of limiting some crypto airdrops to those who have proof of humanity in order to cut down on bots gaming airdrop systems, the example that really gets me thinking is the idea of a crypto credit score. Currently, all truly open lending platforms in crypto, like Aave, are based on the idea of over collateralized loans. This is necessary because if anyone could borrow more money than they have, they could just not pay back the loan and create a new Ethereum address. But this limitation of loans needing to be over collateralized has created this phenomena where DeFi hasn't really broken into the real world. Even though Aave has a huge amount of use, most over collateralized borrowing is used for creating interesting financial positions like going leveraged long or short or used for yield farming. I actually have a lot of tutorial videos on how to do this. But with a soul bound credit score NFT, there might be a way to create financial markets to lend to people using under collateralized loans. Obviously, the idea of a credit score has a lot of problems in the real world, and there are a lot of things that would need to be figured out in order to do it the right way using crypto. But it's clear that soulbound NFTs could open up a whole new wave of crypto applications, including DeFi applications that could enable decentralized finance to compete more directly with traditional finance. It's a really exciting area to watch over the next few years. It's hard thinking about applications that don't exist right now with soulbound NFTs. So I'm curious if you can think of any, and I'd love to hear about them in the comments. I really recommend reading Vitalik's blog, but if you want me to do more videos like this, leave a like to let me know. Also, by the time you're seeing this video, it's likely that we will have hit 1000 subscribers, which is freaking awesome. Thank you so much to everyone for the support and the kind comments. I will do my best to keep improving the quality of my content for you. Some people have asked how they can support the channel beyond subscribing. So from now on, I'll put an Ethereum address and a Bitcoin address below. It's still early, but the goal of mine is to be able to make this kind of content full time. Once again, thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next video.